welcome to the March Mom Talk Thrive, where we're digging into whole health part two. Yes, and the first part um, of last week or last month, we talked about just the whole um, meaning of health and the whole um, the facets of health. When I think we we talk about health, so much of us think about um, what am I not doing or what should I do? And that's not what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about what are just the elements of health and what are some things that we can just implement um, and take a baby step forward. And I think when you start young, <laughs> Um, I think about these different cultures where these kids eat crazy foods, and I'm like, how do they do that? Well, they start them young. So, you know, I love Anne Marie's message, begin as you mean to go, starting young with healthy foods, right? And then just keeping that as the, the whole heartbeat of your family. Um, and it's so easy to, to cut corners in that. And I, that's where my health really, you know, took a decline was I think I just got mm -hmm. into that cutting corners, knowing that I should be doing something, but just cutting those corners and not paying attention to those lifelines. And so we're gonna focus more on the physical body part today. We did talk about the spiritual and how it's so important for us to connect with the Lord. And when once we've accepted Jesus into our hearts, we have that spirit connection with him. And then that, can reign over our our mind, our will, and our emotions, which is our soul. So the spirit, mind, will, and emotions, our soul, and then it translates out into our body, which is carrying all of that. So three parts, interconnected, so important. And for us to walk in the fullness of who God created us to be, we have to pay attention to all of them. And I so appreciate that whole making health important, but not an idol. And, you know, we talk about self care. And I think self care can just be, you know, kind of borderline so all about me. But yet it's so important for the why behind it. Why are we doing that? We're putting our oxygen tank on so that we can give more. I, I feel like when I'm reminded of why I pay attention to my health, I just want to be able to um, have the greatest influence on my family and for the kingdom and for my marriage. So the overflow of me being on my A game, not always, you know what I'm saying, making progress. It's not perfection, but progress. The overflow is my influence in a kingdom mindset. And so it's not just about how I look or how much I weigh or, you know, all of that. Right. It's, there's such a greater purpose. And I think when we, rem re we remind ourselves the why, um, it's we realize that it's not about an idol. It's about us being the best that we can for him who created us. And and I think it's so I'm so passionate about it because I think I fell into where I had I was on the couch, you know, all of that. You heard my story. And so and I saw that firsthand of me by me neglecting, I call them my lifelines, it sucked the life out of me. And so in my whole journey, I have paid so attention, so much attention to these lifelines that we're going to share um, in a very practical way of, and, and none of it is going to be anything new to you guys. <laughs> and so, but our prayer is that you, maybe something will inspire you and meet you right, right where you're at to take maybe a step forward. And maybe we're just praying that the Holy Spirit will speak to everybody and you leave encouraged and not um, discouraged and, and frustrated, but it will be that, oh, you know what, I can make this easy or you know what, I can just tweak this and tweak that. So um, we're going to talk about the body and it is our temple. And the Lord gave me this acronym that I'm going to share with you guys. And it's the acronym is freedom. And because I feel like when I, for me personally, when I'm paying attention to these lifelines, I walk in a freedom and I walk in um, in health. And so we're going to share them. And because what I find is when I'm off or if I'm kind of spiraling down in any way or um, I don't feel like I'm on my A game, I can go back and say, hey, where am I at with these lifelines? And so hopefully maybe this is something that you'll be able to use moving forward past this. So the first one is about is freedom and it's F 
and it's food. And so, and it's also the food plate. And so what is going on your plate? And what food are, do you have in your house? And so I always um, say I don't buy anything that I don't, I don't want us to consume. And so when we were raising our children, we are a very tight budget. And so it was, you know what, we're, I'm going to redirect our money to food that is going to bring life to us because we have a choice of what, what we're bringing in. Most of us are, you know, mom's buying the groceries. And so what are you buying? And so that helped me is what kind of, what am I eating? What am I bringing into the house? I'm just gonna fire through these and then we're gonna go back and make them very practical. So F would be um, food, food plate, and then also encouraging you to do farm to table, which eliminates processed foods. And then so R is rest. How are we doing on getting sleep? And, and we can all just kind of chuckle like, wow, I wish I could. <laughs> But what are we doing and are we sitting down during the day? So we'll go back that. So R is rest. E is exercise. So are we moving? And then the other E is the essential nutrients. And so believe that what essential nutrients, it kind of ties in with the food. But I also do believe that our food eating even wonderful food, we're still going to need supplementation. So what essential nutrients are you getting? And then also it's kind of eat the rainbow. F-R-E-E-D would be detoxing. You know, what are, what are you bringing into your home as far as chemicals? And what are you doing with your mind? What, what's, what are you allowing in? So detoxing, um, O is oxygen and outside. Are you getting outside to get your oxygen? And are you drinking your H2O, which is your water? So you have to throw in water there too, okay. because so I'm gonna say H2O. Oxygen. Because outside. water is an easy one for us to slip on and it can have crazy effects on our body. Um, and it's such an easy thing to slip, but yet it's okay. such, such an easy thing to implement. F-R-E-E-D-O-M. It's not free doom. <laughs> I, oh, could, I can delete that. <laughs> right um and then the m is your mindset and so your m is your mindset which i tied into our soul which has our mind our will and our emotions and m we know of the importance of gratitude we know the importance oops no it's okay we're good i was just deleting the extra o oh okay good <laughs> and so we know we hear about that gratitude journaling you know meditating on god's word so that is your m and that is your whole mind, will, and emotions that connects into our spirit. So, and then I add an explanation point at the end, which is hormone health, because I do think that um, that is a very real thing at whatever age that you're at. So anyway, those are the lifelines to help. Um, and hopefully that will um, help you when you're trying to figure out maybe um, what step to take forward in um and just for your family so i love that especially since it's very easy to get overwhelmed with yeah. everything especially well, hopefully if, that didn't overwhelm yeah them. well but if you are overwhelmed just thinking okay what's one thing i can change this month yeah. this week whatever you feel like you have the capacity to obviously if you have a newborn rest is not one you're going to focus on this month well, actually you are because you're going to work on getting that baby on a routine so that you can get rest there we month. go rest in routine we should yeah. do the r there you go rest in routine exactly and that's what you're going to be focusing on that's good that's good so none yeah. of those are surprising to anybody, I'm sure, yeah. but it's just kind of making a comprehensive list. And so let's go to food. I think that's such yeah. a fun one. And I think it's one that continues to evolve. I think a health journey is similar to a spiritual journey. I mean, you can always take a, the next step forward. And I remember when, you know, kind of where do you make the changes? Somebody said, you know what, what are you consuming the most of? And um, so, you know, white flour, white sugar would probably be, you know, if, if you can, you know, minimize those, that would be a great place to start. Um, and then what can you add would be, you know, the, the fresh vegetables, you know, making what you can from scratch. Not everything. There's some really good things that you can do fast too. 
Um, but what kind of food are you bringing into your home? So do you want to Yeah, and talk learning about that? how to read labels, and that's Oh, yeah. kind of tricky because there's a lot of ingredients, but understanding what's in it. You know, we'll go to the, the bread aisle, and the kids are like, you know, which bread can we get, Mom? And I'll pull one off the shelf and read it, and they're like, what am I even looking for? <laughs> And so I'll tell some ingredients and we're going to try and stay away from maybe this or this and but just educating yourself and I'm still learning I still don't know everything that's always on a label usually if I don't know what it Yeah. is that's not a good thing. The less ingredients generally the better but Yeah, that's so good. yeah that's one area I mean you can't go wrong with fruits or vegetables. Yeah. That's always the purest. You talk about processed. I heard uh, the definition of processed is when you pick it from the field, it's unprocessed. Anything you do to it, include chopping it, is the beginning of processing it. Oh. <laughs> so there's And you minimal. send it to a manufacturing plant and put it in a box, Yeah. you know? Add a few preservatives, add some sugar, add this, add that. You know, the more and more you do to the original food, the more you are processing it. But, you know, some processing needs to happen. It's not that all processing is bad. But to what extent are you eating food that is processed? How much of it is fresh? Is in the, Mm -hmm. I know you talked about uh, shopping the perimeter Yeah. of the grocery store. Yeah. Try to stay away from the inside of the grocery store. Um, I won't say stay away, but make shop the perimeter shop the perimeter. Yeah. And don't eat food that comes from a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> I did see bananas. what did you what did you say don't eat food that comes from where a The gas gas station station. oh okay <laughs> the gas station. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. So, I mean, these are just kind of funny things we're throwing out there. You know, um, I'm going to. I wasn't prepared to do this, but I'm going to just mention this because I thought that you were we were talking about the why. And I thought that this was super interesting is in the bread Becker's story and Ellen probably knows it better than I do, but um, the whole concept of packaged material packaged food I mean it was just such a discovery. when they had cake mixes and things canned foods and different things that you could actually put on a shelf. So all of our, the food, that was what made it convenience foods, which is kind of the decline of health in America. The whole goal of that was to extend the shelf life. And so when they extended the shelf life, they had to take natural, healthy ingredients out and put preservatives in so that it could last longer on the shelf. And I thought that was so interesting. And I, I actually bought a hamburger like Oh, this was 10 fabulous. years, I should have brought it. I should have brought it You 10 still years. have it? I do. 10 years ago from like a fast food hamburger, you, you may, if you follow me, I may have, you may have seen it and I have it wrapped up and it's just a plain hamburger and the bun is still intact and it looks like a bun. And then there's this little patty, no mold, nothing on it. And then the bun and it looks the same and it 10 years ago. And so there is no way that that is going to, you know, we know fast food is bad for us, but you think about that. So we have a choice in the foods that we're eating, foods that are fresh, that lead to life and foods that are not fresh. And they're not taking us, you know, they're not feeding the cells in our body and, and helping us to, to, you know, um, to thrive and our body getting what it needs. And so God made our bodies um, in such a beautiful way. And how are we helping our body to function at its best? So are we giving it the nutrients that we need? And so we have choices um, all the time. Yeah. So. Um, I'm, I'm big on needing to know the why, Yes. because you can tell me eat healthy. I've known for years and years and years that I should eat healthy, but you know what? I'm kind of in a rush and that box of cookies, I can eat like 10 and they'll get filled up and I'll have energy for the rest of the day Yeah. and I'll feel just fine. Yeah. And so, but then you start digging into the why, why isn't Yeah. that good? What am I missing? And that's where I landed on, okay, I'm not going to make this choice. Uh, even when I'm in a hurry, but then replacing it. Okay, so let me get back to the why. So a lot of the continuing education that I do to keep my license up, I've been focusing on nutrition and really digging into the why, uh, which is fascinating to me. And I'll give just a little snippet for those who also need this and want a little bit of, of science behind it. But um, as we eat, as we breathe, our body is kicking out um, free radicals, it's called. And these free radicals damage our cells. Yes. And it's, it's a natural process of metabolism. 
This is not a surprise to God. It's not a, uh, a problem with the way we are created. It is what happens. It is a part of aging. Maybe it's a part of the fall. I'm not sure. However, God in his great design created foods that are rich in antioxidants. And what they essentially do is they attack these free radicals and bind them and take them away from our body so that they can't do any damage. So you hear about antioxidants, you know, this is food is high in antioxidants, high in antioxidants, you need this. Well, that's why it's essentially like this little scavenger. Mm -hmm. Every time we take in an antioxidant, it's a scavenger. It's going in and finding these free radicals that are bumping around our body, creating damage and it's attacking them and binding them so they can't create any damage. And so what foods are high in antioxidants? Fruits and vegetables, you say eat the rainbow. The rainbow foods are full of antioxidants. Uh, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, vitamin D. Um, you hear about CoQ10. CoQ10 is a big antioxidant. Glutathione, a lot of people are low in glutathione and don't even know it. Um, and that affects our immune system. So anyway, that's the why behind it. And these free radicals, that's what, you know, is causing inflammation in our body. Mm -hmm. It's causing cancer. Yeah. Uh, it, it's causing so many different things. So when I hear that, I'm like, oh, that's why. Okay, I'll go get the sweet pepper instead of the Oreo, even though the Oreo would give me instant sugar carb boost. And I would feel really good. <laughs> but now I know why. Well, and that's really interesting. I'm happy that you shared that. Um, and our food isn't isn't what it used to be yeah, because so of the way that it's processed, because of the way that it's grown, right. because of the genetically modified. I mean, just all of those things have affected the quality of our food. And so it's not like when our great grandmother and they would eat off the farm. I mean, it's just so different. And so that's why it's impossible to get all the nutrients that we need just from food, which is where a supplementation would come in. Um, and I loved that um, explanation. And I, uh, I remember somebody saying disease, I mean, you're a pharmacist. So in a very simplified way, disease, all si mm. most sickness and disease pretty much can be tied back to two things. One is deficient or nutrient deficiencies and overexposure to toxins, which supports mm. exactly what you just said. And so when you think about that disease, those two things um, and genetics, you know, you hear about that, but just because it's genetically in your family doesn't mean that you have to get it. I mean, mm -hmm. there's things that you can do to counter that. And so if you think about that de um, nutrient deficiencies and overexposure to toxins, that motivated me to, to like, wow, there's a lot that I can do to contribute to my health in a yeah. good way. Yeah. So there you, you keep talking i'm going to look something okay. up and i'm going to share it with them so live foods dead foods um lead to life you know farm to table i'm just going to share the food plate because this really helped me especially when i was going through a health crisis because and especially as a busy mom it's easy just to grab foods and you know what are you grabbing and I wanted to share this because I had this like revelation because all of us are, you know, prep moms, you know, we're working on what? Getting our kids a full, full feeding and getting them on a schedule. Why would that be different for us? So let's get a full feeding and let's get us on a schedule. And so that just kind of blew my mind. I thought, oh my gosh, when does it switch? When do we just start to grab food? And when do we just eat whatever? right? We're st stabilizing our metabolism, which is what we're trying to do for our infants. What about us? And so if we have our meals at the same time every day, our body will expect that food and will know that it's coming and it won't go into an emergency mode and slow down your metabolism so that your heart and your, your kidneys can function. Because that's what, well, what will happen if we starve our body or don't give it what it needs. It will, it will automatically self-preserve. So three meals, whatever time you think <laughs> it was going to work for you. Usually it's within an hour of waking just to give your body the nutrients that it needs. And so break a, your day up into three healthy meals. And I prefer a shake in the morning be, just because I can load it all up. But whatever it looks like for you, think about you getting a full feeding. 
this helped me because then in that late afternoon around three o'clock and kids would be coming home from school or you know you get into those hours where the kids are a little fussy i found that i was kind of turning to food to just kind of emotionally eat or whatever and i'm like you know what i already had lunch and dinner's coming i don't need i don't need anything and if i do i could just grab unlimited fruits and vegetables so it helped me as far as stabilizing my metabolism and getting me out of that gray area because we know when we have babies and you're they're crying in between feedings right we know okay they don't they don't need to eat again right now they had their full feeding and so we're going to hold them off until their next feeding same idea that really helped me i know you haven't really ever struggled with your weight maybe you, you have trouble gaining weight, gaining weight yeah. i do not have that trouble but this helped me in maintaining my weight and getting myself on a rhythm and on a and then not eating past you know dinner but but you know, on the, on different the, things like on that the flip yeah. side um i will forget to eat i know how in the world i get going <laughs> I, it's probably adrenaline and cortisol or something <laughs> kicking in it's bad but you know what i have to guard against is so we usually eat dinner around 6 30 at night and so maybe around five something like that i'm cooking dinner and I realize that I haven't eaten in quite a while and I'm really hungry. Oh, right. And so that I munch while I'm cooking dinner. So I've really had to guard against that and make sure that, okay, I'm going to cook dinner. I'm going to get myself, it's going to be two hours before I eat a snack. Yeah. It's a good snack and not the bag of chips that really looks tempting or the Oreos and, uh, and make it through. So yeah, I have to look at when, you know, I think last time we talked about emotional eating that uh, sometimes our eating is a comfort and an emotional need that is not being met. We need to seek that somewhere else. Sometimes it's just a convenience. A, I'm totally. really hungry. I'm going to be eating dinner soon. I'm not going to fix myself a really nice snack when I'm fixing dinner. And so thinking through and thinking ahead to prevent that munchy. Well, you get in that gray area, exactly like with your babies. Yeah, I shouldn't eat right. now, so I'll just have a chip or two or half a bag. <laughs> and I would, you know, so so chips weren't in our house because of, yeah. of that. Yeah, <laughs> because of the chips. I know. We got, my husband and I go to Costco together, and he's like grabbing this. I was like, no. He's like, you don't have to eat it. I was like, I know, but if it's in the house, I will. <laughs> And I, I always call them what's eye level, like what's eye level in your refrigerator and what's eye level in your pantry, because those are the things, just the power of suggestion. So Don likes chips, too. And I'm like, can you keep those in your office or, you know, they're on the top level so they're not the just padlock and don't tell I me. Know. Well, it's true. That, I mean, honestly, there's been seasons where I have to work through those things. But anyway, hopefully these things, these things help. But the food plate, I always like to say, I mean, if any one of these components is missing, I will be hungry in between. So when I talk about a food plate, it consists of half your plate in fruits and vegetables, whatever that looks like, frozen, fresh, whatever. So a salad, things in your smoothie, but your fruits and vegetables, half or I'm sorry, a quarter would be your protein, clean protein, chicken, fish, um, lean ground beef, you know, I mean, whatever that is. I try to stay away from pork personally, but you know, whatever a lean meat is healthy meat, or vegetable. I'm sorry, not vegetable protein, whatever that looks like, and then your whole grain. And so many people eliminate that whole grain because they're like carbophobes or they think that it's going to help but that is necessary for your metabolism to get the most out of your protein and so it's very important to have that whole grain or a starchy food you know your sweet potatoes or your whole grain rice or your quinoa or um the farro um, or whole grain pasta but it's only a quarter of your plate not three quarters not three quarters yeah. But so anyway, these are just guidelines, but I know and and it can be off a little bit. But if I have, you know, a plate of pasta, I think about that the next meal, like, you know what, maybe I'm just going to have a salad, but I still have all parts of the food plate on because then I get in that gray area like, ooh, well, you know, I didn't have a, pro a high protein at the last meal. And then I just for me, I need it to be somewhat structured. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and I won't do it on this call. 
I don't, I'm going to say you should do it in your group, but I yeah. shouldn't tell you what to do in your group. No, but me. I love, I struggle with ideas. I don't love to be in the kitchen. Yeah. I don't love to get on Instagram or in cookbooks. And I, you every now and then will be like, oh, I just I got a sweet potato and I threw in some black beans and some salsa and a little arugula. And it was so good. I was like, that's brilliant. <laughs> so I just need ideas. So maybe if we'll you do want, that in our group. Yeah, do that with Julie. She just gives me these easy ideas. I'm like, I can totally do that on a budget. Yeah. That's what and, I love about and it. And I'm all about all about simple, simple things and you know, prepping, but not all week, you know, or all at once. I do it throughout the week and you know, I always have food. The key, I'm we'll just can go on to the next one, but the key is, you know, are you stocked? What do you have yeah. in your kitchen? So I am yeah. never without a meal. And so then we don't ever feel like we have to pick up food. Um, that wasn't an option because we did have such a tight budget. And so always you can have breakfast for, for dinner. You can have peanut butter and jelly and everybody's going to be fine. You know, I mean, just things like that. So it was never, oh my goodness, what's for dinner? We always have eggs. We always have whole grain toast. And you know what? There's always vegetables yes, in the house. I so hard boiled eggs, nice and easy ones. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think for me, it was uh, thinking ahead Yes. And, and planning to make some food. Yeah, I'm trying not to buy um, some of the processed bars yes. for my kids because they're always grabbing the the granola bars. It's expensive. Which are, they're expensive. They're full of all sorts of ingredients that you really shouldn't be eating. And um, so just making. I think you had a great recipe. Um, another one of our friends had a great recipe. And so just it's really easy. I've even taught the kids. They love them. Throw in yes. a few dark always chocolate have chips. Bars. Uh, something like that. And so that's their, when they need like a, a, a hearty, yeah. not to, you know, I say, go grab an apple, go grab some apple sticks and whatever, carrot sticks. But yeah, thinking ahead. And when my kids were young, I had bell peppers on the counter yeah. because you know what, when they're hungry, they'll eat it mm -hmm. and serve your baby the vegetable first when they're starving in the high chair, <laughs> you know, I mean, so it's a power of suggestion, you know, putting those things out. And so it's just kind of, those good. little tricks. Yeah, That's good. Yeah. So, so anyway. you have so many tricks I've learned over the years. So join Julie and her oh, group. You'll get them a so lot. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Or salad dressings. Ask her about salad dressings. Three Not ingredients. Now. I know. I know. So, so, easy. so easy, so inexpensive, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have all the bad oils that most mm -hmm. salad dressings have. So. Yeah. Anyway. You're so sweet. All right. So F and then R, rest. You know, seven to nine hours is ideal. You know, your body, why do you, you want to rest? Because your body's repairing at night. And so um, you, your body needs that REM sleep so that it can rest and repair. If we eat before bed, which we're not going to because we have those three meals, but what happens is your body is so focused on digesting your food that it's not able to do what it's intended to do. So, you know, a full feeding for you yeah. at night, not ideal. Not ideal. And going 12 hours between your last meal and your first meal yes. is really good and again it's that metab our metabolism is kicking out free radicals and so giving you know breakfast is breaking a fast there are healthy fasts um i mean we talk about the spiritual um benefits yeah. of fasting but there are healthy um benefits of having times of fasting now there are certain health conditions that shouldn't when yeah. you're pregnant or nursing you shouldn't yeah. so i want to be very careful and preface all that sure, that's but you good. know if you finish your last meal at seven o'clock at night, you might, depending on your schedule, you might want to wait and say, you know what, seven in the morning is going to be the first bite of food that I take. It's, it's not too long a time, but that will also, if you think of it that way, then at 10 o'clock and you're thinking of that bowl of ice cream, you go, man, if I do that, then I can't eat till 10 in the morning. <laughs> You know, if you have that in your mind that I want Which to have Which gets a you in a gray area for it those of you that does. need a little bit. It so, does. But yeah. turning off your gut metabolism engine for 12 hours reduces the amount of free radicals that are getting thrown out too. Yeah. So that there's health benefits to having that small, you know, even just overnight fast for your body to be able to repair. Because while it's sleeping, your body is repairing mm -hmm. itself too. So it's kind of this double, I love learning about all the why behind it. Why yes. And that's your intermittent fasting. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, F R time, time yeah, yeah rest you know all the good stuff E exercise move whatever you can do I love that Ellen baby's crawling on you absolutely I just yeah. I have so many memories of that I have so many memories of putting all the kids in a stroller one on a bike 
And I look, I, I always said I needed a t-shirt that said desperate <laughs> because it was, it was what I needed. And I needed it more for my mental health. You know, exercise is the best antidepressant. So if you lean towards a little bit being low and, um, and Gabby, you mentioned, you know, that, I mean, it's amazing what your body kicks out and how it clears out that fog and, you know, lifts your spirits just with all those hormones that it's producing. So, yeah, I heard a talk on physiologically what is happening in your brain yeah. when you elevate your heart rate. And we're not talking crazy elevated, yeah. but even a little, how it's just like washing the brain and the, yes. the extra blood flow in your brain. It's bringing extra oxygen. You can think better. It was like, oh, okay, I'll exercise every day or you know, at least move. So true. Some I would do jumping jacks. I mean, just turn on a kid, you know, let them put on music and we're going to dance and, you know, run around the house. I mean, we had dance parties all the time just yeah. to get us all moving. Has anyone found mm -hmm. any YouTube channels that they love or, you know, because it's there's different seasons in your life where you can't get to the gym or it's too cold to go outside yeah. and go for or too hot. That happens too. So if you have any, um, any that That's you good. love, go ahead and put it in the chat. I'll just put one that I found in love. My, or actually, I'll let Ellen do it. Um, but uh, there are some free workouts that are really good online. I've been an app called Wake Out. Okay, so go ahead, give us all your suggestions. Yeah, we please. Love to hear them. And maybe if you don't have uh, that, if you share how you move, like how do you get your exercise, that would be really helpful. Yeah. Um, either in the chat or if you want to unmute, you have something to share, please. We know that you guys, a lot of you are into health too. So we would love to hear from you. Yeah. Insights, things that you've learned, tips and tricks. That's totally. what this is about. Yeah, nourish, move, love. I've been doing her. I love her stuff. But she has that. great pregnancy workouts too, like first trimester workouts, second trimester, and then postpartum, like really gradual i wish i'd had them postpartum but just how knowing that um you know your mm. ab muscles have been whatever <laughs> you can't jump back into a workout but slowly repairing and, mm. and whatever so That's she's good. really good i like her she's pretty solid. awesome at whatever age right yeah, yeah um and so essential nutrient we already talked about eating the rainbow every color has a different um, micronutrient that we need and um and vitamins you know supplementation i think you know everybody needs to be on a quality vitamin and multi at least an omega for the brain every cell needs needs that i don't know if we should get into it. it's kind of getting late so um i think an omega vitamin d women are deficient in magnesium i don't want to overwhelm everybody but just sup proper supplementation is something that's that's really important. Yeah. Um, detox, you know, your mind, your body and your house. Um, I think with young children, especially just switching those chemicals out of your house to see, I have seen more kids um, being healed of, of asthma mm -hmm. with switching chemical products out you know what's happening is people are using those Clorox wipes and they're putting it on the high chair and then the food goes on the high chair and then the kids are eating it um, or they're cleaning their bathroom with Clorox and eight whatever comet and whatever the sprays are and your kids are breathing that and you and so there's so many good options and that are inexpensive that I would really encourage you to think about, you know, and if you haven't kind of gotten on that bandwagon, maybe the what's one thing that you could switch over and do. I put a, a website a little while ago, it's ewg.org, it's environmental working group, and you can put a product yeah. and someone even, Stephanie, do you, um, you said that there's an app I was not aware of that and you could called healthy living and you can scan items at the store or home and it'll just pop up how clean a product is yeah and um it can be overwhelming at first i know years ago and i was like okay we're gonna try to do cleaner products it was overwhelming and so just start with one i was like okay i'm gonna clean my shampoo up a little bit and so you know finding a shampoo that worked for my hair that was not yeah. toxic to my body and cleaning products and yeah it it took a while uh i don't, don't even think i'm there yet but well and it's so true. I remember someone saying clean has no scent. Now I'm not talking about natural essential oils, but clean has no scent. And so if you have scent in your house, 
that, you know, is it a candle, a plug-in, all of those things. Um, if, if your house is clean and the air is clean, then it wouldn't have a scent. And I'm, again, I'm not talking about oils, but I'm talking about those other things that we're buying. And honestly, if you, the, once you start to get a clean environment in your home and you walk down one of those aisles at the grocery store or in Walmart or Target, you, it's like, woo, because you just get so used to having a clean environment in your home. And there's so much we can't do about the pollution out there. There's so many things that we can't do, but what we do in our house, we do. So um, that would be D and then o, o would be outside get outside. I love these challenges that are out there of, of getting your kids outside a certain number of hours a year. And then I have to say, I am such a believer on, on drinking water. We all know that, but I'm telling you that a lot of people are walking around just dehydrated and, you know, headaches, fatigue, not feeling great. I mean, it's amazing water. And even if you think you are drinking enough water, I think it's good to measure it every once in a while. I even got an app. I know you don't have to have an app, but I love apps. And there is an app called Waterminder. I even got it for a while so that I yeah. would plug in not just water, but other beverages that I was drinking to see if all my liquid was coming from, you know, yeah. tea and I wasn't drinking enough water. And it was just real helpful. I was actually doing better than I thought, but I did have some room for improvement. Yeah. But um, that was good. I actually wake up with headaches when I have not had enough water. So that's a good reminder. Honest. Although if that happens, I'm way past. Well, and it's exactly. And especially if you're a coffee drinker, you know, that's such a dehydrator. Caffeine I also dehydrator. heard this really fun thing. You can put, um, you know, they say half your body in ounces, body weight in ounces. Yeah. In pounds. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so I re so count how many like of these drinks of however many ounces this is and you put rubber bands on the number of rubber bands that you're supposed to drink and then you pull it down every time you drink one. And yeah, I thought that was a good way. Bethany taught me that. Yeah. That was a good way just to keep track, you know, an easy tracker if you don't do yeah. an app. So the I mean, this is really inexpensive drinkware and this is 32 ounces right there. You, there. you know, how you, many drink, of us? you drink two of these a day. You're already at half. I mean, that's eight, eight ounce glasses right there. Now, if I work out, I need more than that. But yeah. That's my minimum is to drink two of those a day. Do you want to share what you shared with me about the? Your yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did a, a continuing education on hydration, which was fascinating about what all hydration does in your brain, what it does to your joints. I mean, so many different things. You have creaky, achy joints. Sometimes it's just because you know, a lot of the cartilage and stuff at our joints is a little bit like a sponge. Uh -huh. And when it's dehydrated, it, you know, kind of shrinks in and it doesn't give the padding. So that oh. was fascinating. But um, yeah, so obviously our urine is a, is a big indicator of how hydrated we are. And I read this thing that said, if you are peeing and it looks like lemonade, you're pretty good. If it looks like mellow yellow, the soda, uh, you are moderately dehydrated. And if it looks like apple juice, you are severely dehydrated. So I thought that was good. Go pee and say, oh, my lemonade, mellow yellow or apple juice. Now, I will say if you're taking a B vitamin supplement, that will make your urine yellow. In fact, years ago, I started giving my husband a B supplement and he's big on hydration. He drinks a lot of water and he was like, I don't know why I, I just seem really dehydrated. I'm like, do you feel it or is your pee yellow? He's like, my pee is so yellow. And I was like, I forgot to tell you, darling, I gave you a B vitamin, that's what does it. He's like, ah, <laughs> but he actually sometimes overhydrates and he gets cramps sometimes uh, like in his leg or in his feet because he gets overhydrated and doesn't have enough electrolytes going along with that. So he needs to be careful. He likes to work out a lot too, that his hydration also involves some electrolytes. So and, and a quick electrolyte balancer that's inexpensive is like a pinch of Celtic sea salt mm -hmm. or the pinch of natural Himalayan salt in your water. So yeah, that's an easy I one. I don't have mm -hmm. any thoughts on purification systems because I personally don't do that, but probably the pure, the water, the better. So if anyone has any comments or I don't know if you do on that. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't have any knowledge of that. So. Mm hmm so um, I think that's it on the outside. And then the M would be mindset, which is what we have covered a lot of your mind, your will, and your emotions. And mm -hmm. so kind of having the spirit kind of once you accept Jesus, right, you're, it starts to the transformation of your mind. Yeah. And so 
right? Um, be transformed by the renewing of your mind in Romans. And so once we, that's just a forever process. And so having the, our mind, our will and our emotions submit to the spirit and us being spirit led, it affects all of this. And to not have that and to have all the other letters, I feel like you have a huge missing, like your foundation, the M, yeah. your foundation is missing and you get into the yo-yo dieting or you get into the frustration, you get into all of these things because you're doing it in your own strength when really you need that, the spirit and your mind, your will and your emotions to um, kind of be the foundation of all of them. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. And then hormone health is a big one. I just, honestly, if you factor in these different elements, these different lifelines, a lot of times it does affect your hormone balance. Your diet affects your hormone balance. And so, I mean, our, our hormones naturally are affected by our cycle and then also with age, but the best place to start is with these foundational things. And if you hear about people that get maybe a, a negative diagnosis or something, what do they do? They radically change their diet. And I'm like, don't wait for the bad report. Yeah. You know, let, what are we can do? What can we do now? Baby, baby steps. And then all of a sudden it leads to a more of a lifestyle. And so just picking things up along the way and hopefully being encouraged in something like this. I mean, I remember when we, we started grinding our own wheat. And you were an inspiration to that. And the Eversons were an inspiration to that. D. Helsey was an inspiration to that. But I was like, for a long time, I thought, I cannot, but I can buy healthy bread, but I cannot do that. And then all of a sudden it was that fit into my rhythm. And then it was, I still don't make my own bread on a regular basis, but I make whole grain pancakes with the flour. So it's just little things. What can you, what can you evolve into? And maybe it's just, you know where, you know, maybe the Lord's leading you or prompting you. Um, and so just start there. Yeah. But hopefully be inspired and not overwhelmed. Yeah. If we look, uh, and then we're going to open it up. We'd yeah, love to please. hear your comments and thoughts. I just have one final thing. If we think back, I don't know, one, 200 years, I mean, our jobs would have been getting up in the morning and threshing the wheat and baking the bread and going out and butchering oh, the cow and processing the meat. I mean, if you think about what, what involved, what was involved and bringing a meal to the table 200 years ago, it consumed them <laughs> because they didn't have the store with all the processed mm -hmm. things and the quick convenience things that we do, and the washing machine too, the dishwasher, all these things, which is great. And we can do so much. Uh, I think one thing I can fall into is I don't enjoy cooking. I don't enjoy buying food. I don't enjoy preparing food. And so my default for so many years was comedians, comedians. I mean, if something was frozen and I could pop it in, I am going to do it. And then I started realizing, oh, that's not the healthiest. Actually, I need to be making some things. And when I first heard about some of these things, grinding your wheat, I had three kids, five and under. I was like, I do not have time for that. And then uh, I became, you know, I realized I did have a little bit of time. Once the, once the baby was sleeping through the night, I was like, okay, I have a little bit of time. I could do this. And so then I did one thing. And then when I had a little bit more time, I could do this until it became a habit. Yeah, so um, good. This is part of my day. I make time for this because it's important. And then, okay, I'm going to make time to do a little bit more and make time to do a little bit more. And if it's important, whatever is important to you, you will make time yes. to do. And so if you decide making my meals from scratch is important to me, take a baby step and do that. If it is important to you, you will make time yes, for it. You will. Now, I know there's seasons. There are seasons where a pregnancy is really tough. You have a new baby. There's a sick family member. Give and yourself- And a rotisserie chicken is perfect five. solution. <laughs> there is context. There is grace. You're hosting Easter dinner and it's a really hard season. Go to Costco and buy everything and serve your family a Costco dinner. It's okay. Again, context. Don't be legalistic about things. But you think about where you want to go and how can I get there? Yeah. And right now is a season where I can make some steps. Take those steps during that season. And then rest in there when, when you need to. Yeah. Go back a few if you need to. So good. Okay. All right, guys, we're opening it up. Anybody? Okay. Anne Marie? may be thinking, um, how come there's balloons went up? I just, oh, you <laughs> did. It's, it's your a, birthday. It's like well, when you have a birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Happy um, birthday. Well, it's not, wasn't it? Thank you. 
Um, but I wanted to, to say, just to add too, especially for you that, you know, your kids are still little and um, this is the opportunity to maybe start making some changes. But um, I've had the benefit of kind of watching these two ladies so I can share how they, especially for Julie Young, and I, I'm, I know that Julie Keating did too, because we've had some of her kids actually live with us. So I know that they were capable of cooking. But as a result of Julie Young changing her mindset, um, which when you're preparing your meals from scratch, it does take longer. But as you most of you know, they have seven children, some of them are out of the home now. But part of their evening routine as the child got old enough was to help be her sous chef. So as a result, as her children grew, this is what they were used to doing. So mm -hmm. then as a result, all of her kids are healthy eaters. And, yes. and, um, and, and so it, it seems overwhelming in the beginning, but all these little people that you have, they are going to get bigger. And they can be great helpers. So, um, you know, and her youngest, Jacob, 11, he's he's chef extraordinaire already. So it's like, uh, so I just I just say that as a word of encouragement, that it might seem overwhelming. It might take a little bit longer in the beginning, but eventually they're there and, and are a help in the kitchen. I mean, if you've got, I know there's sometimes the kids will even make a meal for you, Julie, right? I mean, now that there's finally, <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, there's so many years coming, <laughs> yeah. That's your, it's the fruit of your labor. It does pay off. <laughs> I, I, I do want to add, I know we're going to open it up, but I have to add that there is a season in middle school that I had to let the kids make some choices on their own. And um, I remember when somebody came over and spent the night with Donald and he brought Mountain Dew and I thought I was going to lose it. <laughs> he snuck it in a backpack. And I honestly, I'm like, okay, Julie, is this really like, it's not a moral issue. It <laughs> felt like a moral issue, but it was not a moral issue, but I was so upset about it, but I had to like step back and let them figure some things out. And you know what, when they're not feeling good, they know where to go. And so um, so I just want to be on the, the real side of it that your kids will have to choose. I don't know who has older children on here that are listening, but, you know, I've had to let them make their own decisions. And there's a couple of them that I'm like, oh, I wish that they would, you know, remember some of the ways that we ate when we were, you know, when I was right when they were in our home. But they're figuring it out, too. So there is that release also. And. Um, but even I remember in middle school, have, I'll never forget that. I thought, I think I might've called you, Anne-Marie. I thought, I mean, I still laugh well, about it. Any other, thing, <laughs> any other thing too, just as, as a balance, um, it was Mountain Dew. Uh, you were selling everybody it does eat mainly healthy. It's what you're characterized by right. but when the kids come over to the nice neighbors next door, <laughs> um, they know that there's frozen Oreos in our freezer. And, and I have little jelly beans and Sour Patch on the counter. So it's not like they don't ever have, right. um, you know. Of course. Stuff like that. But it's what are we characterized by and what is the, what are, what are the main things that we're usually. Well, and not making it an idol, which is how we started out. Right. 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 Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll be back April 29th with another Mom Talk Drive. Okay. Thank you all. See you guys tonight. Yes. Yep. Yep. We'll be back at eight to talk I again. Know. I'm sure it will be completely different. I know. It's like you <laughs> can't remember if we already said it or not. It's really, it's really hard. <laughs> We're going to go drink some water and exercise a little I to know. get our yeah. brain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, That's what I have Chloe for, the dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah there you go. Pets are good. They need to be walked. Yeah. So yeah. it's us doing. Right. Thank you care, so much. Everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.